Welcome to Real Money Talks. Real strategies from the money makers and the world changers that you can use to make millions, keep those millions, multiply your wealth, and build your team. Here's your host, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View, Laurel Langmire. Hi, this is Laurel. Welcome back to Laurel's Real Money Talks, a podcast where we're talking about how to make it. That means money, lots of it. How do you keep it? How do you invest it? And what kind of team should you be using? So we have some awesome new industries that are just taking the world by storm. And I just got back from a a trip through Salt Lake and that whole area. And it's so interesting how few people have even entered these markets. And they're called cannabis and cryptocurrency. And today I have an absolute expert. Just, I mean, most knowledgeable and just open, completely great teacher on cryptocurrency. Dave was with me today. And Dave, just welcome to the show. Hey, I'm proud to be here, Laurel. Thanks. Yeah, no, we're going to be working on some projects. I'm so excited about what we're up to, what you guys are up to. I mean, you've kind of revolutionized some of these places that we'll get to in our conversation. But I'm going to start with some, I think, interesting questions. Um, even when I got them from you, I'm like, what's that? Like, what is the death cross and the golden cross in cryptocurrency, in the crypto market? Yeah, so the even stock traders will understand these phrases. The death cross is when the 50-day moving average passes and crosses the 200 day moving average on the downside. So that usually sparks the official beginning many feel to a bear market. And that's what happened at uh, the beginning of 2018 with Bitcoin. I'm just talking Bitcoin, but you know, all the other altcoins basically followed that path. And it usually lasts a long time after that cross. And so it's been about 14 months uh, since that happened. And the golden cross is, is just the reciprocal. It's when the 50-day moving average crosses the 200 again to the upside. And we're getting pretty close to that moment right now. I mean, there there's actually some altcoins that are about to cross right now. But in terms of Bitcoin, it's going to be happening in the next, uh, you know, two to three months or so. Is that indicated that that's the ideal time to buy? And when you you know, talking to people, I'm sure they're asking you all the time, when's the best time to buy in 2019? Yeah, so that that's part of the story. And one more thing to add there is like, there are a lot of professional big money traders that they wait for that moment before they put the big money in. And they also wait once in the death cross, that's when they short. So a lot of like pro traders, they've been shorting for 14 months just waiting for the golden cross and then they go long and they just play these like 12, 18 month cycles and make max money on this. So the best time to enter the crypto market, there's a couple pieces to uh, the strategy on this. Like there's no one date. Like if anyone just says it's like, yeah, and you know, June 5th, that's when the golden cross will happen. Just put all your money in on that date. Don't listen to that. Nobody knows like when exactly it's going to happen. It could be a month. It could be four months. But what I recommend, and I don't know if you do a disclaimer on the show, Laurel, but you know, I just want to, I'm not a financial <laughs> one out there. Yeah. I've been working every day in this industry the past few years and researching a few years uh, prior to that, but I've also been a stock and Forex analyst for over 20 years. So that's just my experience. And this is, what I've observed in all of this time, this is kind of what happens in the cycle. And what I recommend to people is that don't make your decision all at once. Like, like the entrance into the market, you could ladder in because we're at a price right now where, in my opinion, it's safe to start laddering in because usually what happens after the golden cross is it shoots up, but then it comes back down. And that's, <laughs> to me, is, is the prime time to buy is after that first dip after the cross. That's just my experience. So it's kind of like laddering in over several months. But I believe that you should make your decision by around September and be fully invested with whatever you've decided on the amount that you want to put into cryptocurrency. Because after that period... Pretty much at any moment, 
I think the bull cycle uh, is going to be running pretty rampant. And, you know, there's really sharp spikes, you know, when the bull market gets rolling, which is very different from the stock market. Like you don't get 20, 30, 50 X returns in the stock market in six months. It, it just never happens. So that's kind of unique to the cryptocurrency market. So if folks are out listening, um, just talk a little bit about the different coins. I mean, Bitcoin's, I'm going to call it the, the gold standard, right? But the granddaddy. The, the, uh, just the granddaddy, yeah. So talk about different coins. I mean, there's thousands in the market. I don't think people realize that. Give us some statistics, too. You know, just the show that I just uh, left for two days, only two people in the entire audience for two days had any, any cryptocurrency. So just talk about the statistics of how many people don't even have a wallet. And then yeah. the statistics, you know, just of other coins and how do you look at them? Let's just have that conversation. Sure, absolutely. Like, this is very exciting to me. This part of it is that once the bull market starts, it's hard to pick a loser. You know, so all these, there's hundreds of coins. It's like, hey, we're up 2x, we're up 3x. You know, all, all these coins are going to be rising to some extent. But the reason I'm, I'm most attracted to the DPOS chains right now, which are uh, EOS and BitShares and Whale Shares, which is a fork of Steemit, and the assets that sit on top of them and the projects that are building on top of those chains. And the reason I'm attracted to that and working on them myself, I've migrated to these chains personally, is because of the staking aspect. So a lot of people say staking is the new mining, and I, I agree with that. So kind of a real-world application of that philosophy is that in a flat market where there's consolidation, you could basically be earning dividends. I mean, some projects use different terminologies just for legal purposes, like staking rewards, but you're basically increasing the amount of shares just by holding your balance. So you don't get that with like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, just uh, most of the coins in the market. So when you know there's going to be a long consolidation period, like the next, you know, four to six months, to me, that's the smartest choice because you're increasing your shares more so than you would be holding other coins. And you're also fully invested so that whenever the market breaks, you're already in there. And to me, that's just common sense, you know, is, is just to earn it, accumulate as much as you can. And you can do that with the EOS and BitShares projects that are doing the staking rewards. Does that make sense to you? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And I was saying, talk about the staking versus utility. Like just some there's vernacular of people, because this podcast is all over the world. So those who are really new, I just want to kind of catch them up on some of the vocabulary. So bring that into light as well. Yeah. So a lot of startups, they do it in form of airdrops and they just give like monthly bonus the first, you know, six, eight, even the first year in operation. And it kind of strengthens the market. That's part of the strategy from the, the startup. But just by holding their their main coin, you're earning monthly rewards, monthly bonuses. And other projects, like I, I mentioned before, like the casino dApps even, and the music streaming dApps, you get staking rewards just by holding it. And it, it's based on the activity on the platform. So the music dApps, they kind of call it streaming as mining, meaning like as people are sharing and playing other people's music, that's they consider that the mining period. And, you know, so for like Talent Joe, which we're both familiar with, which will be launching the market pretty soon, that's kind of like participation as mining, like people who use the website and vote in all the contests. That basically is what brings the tokens into circulation until 100 percent are out in the wild. So that that's kind of like the mining period. So people that understand past mining, like physical mining of Bitcoin or something, where you have a server in your house or your warehouse, this is kind of like the evolution of, of the mining concept. And it's obviously more <laughs> energy efficient because it doesn't require any energy usage, like mining Bitcoin or something. Interesting. So talk how you're using um, and how blockchain secures all these transactions and the different wallets. 
you know, the technology that really secures the transactions. So in my experience, Laurel, the most exciting part just of, of just blockchain in general, like blockchain is the technology that is underneath Bitcoin and all the cryptocurrencies is two things, really. The removal of unnecessary middlemen in any industry that's kind of coming up in in the blockchain world. That's exciting because unnecessary middlemen are just people that take their cut of fees and they're not they're not even needed. Like working with these platforms on the on the blockchain, you're it's basically direct. Like with the music streaming part of it, when someone plays your song, you get uh, paid instantly. There's no six month hold like you know with Spotify and Apple and all all the uh, kind of old paradigm projects. Yeah. And ASCAP and licensing, like all everything is changing so fast in terms of how it works. But big picture, probably what's most exciting for me is that it, just the process of monetizing every part of your daily life and your daily business. You know, and that that's why I, I bring up whale shares a lot because I don't really use Facebook and Twitter that much anymore because when I blog or if I network with people and just do social media activities on a platform like whale shares, you make money in the process. You make money when you blog, you get some type of return on your time and your content. And same with the music streaming apps like uh, emanate, which is uh, launching very soon where I'm an advisor, you're able to monetize all the plays of your songs where on something like SoundCloud or something where people play it for free, you make nothing. And if you're actually using SoundCloud as a host for a podcast, you're actually losing money by creating content. So I kind of made that shift a few years ago. So it's like every part of my, if I'm writing a blog article, if I'm sharing my music, if I'm sharing some photography or art or Basically, it's really anything, any part of my life and business, it's being monetized on blockchain platforms. So that's it. So, yeah. So, you know, one of the most interesting things, and those that are out listening to, if you want, we did a workshop in Las Vegas. It was uh, one and a half days and just genius content. I mean, just extraordinary content. So those of you that want that, you can go to asklaurel.com. Put in your name, your email, your phone number, and we can uh, pop that uh, replay of that two-day course out to you. It was live streamed in Las Vegas. Jim Blasco was there. David was there. His partner, Walt, were there. Just a great afternoon of learning about crypto. And one of the things I know that just continues in our community, our conversation, David, is the different wallets for the different coins. So speak to that a little bit, because I think people just think there's a wallet and you can buy anything. And there's really you know, much more purposeful use. So speak to that. Yeah, sure. So there's, we've kind of been directing people just to start at Coinbase, at least the U.S. folks, which I believe was pretty much everybody at these uh, events you're doing. That's the, how you connect to your U.S. bank, how you deposit and withdraw. It's kind of like PayPal. And it's, it's also the gold standard of the industry, just like PayPal, being a liaison to your bank. But when you join uh, an exchange, like an exchange is also a hot wallet too, because you can store coins there, but it's always recommended to store your coins in the wallet of the native coin that you hold for like bit shares, for example. Like if you're going to buy a bunch of bit shares and invest in bit shares, you can buy it on Binance or Bitrex and stuff like that, the different centralized exchanges. But once you do, there's no reason to keep them there. You should transfer them to your BitShares wallet, which takes like three minutes to set up. And it's so, so much more secure there because nobody has access to your wallet but you. And same with EOS. Like if you're going to buy EOS, just set up an EOS wallet and move all of your EOS there so that you're the only one that controls your keys. We mentioned this in this in the webinar series uh, a couple months ago, like like Quadriga is a Canadian exchange that just lost like two hundred million dollars, like just got frozen because one of the uh, I believe the CEO passed away 
So that wasn't necessarily a hack, but other centralized exchanges have been hacked. And it's obviously a centralized database. So once the hacker gets in, they, they have access to everybody's account, everyone's balances. And that doesn't happen at, you know, like an EOS wallet or a BitShares wallet because they're decentralized and you're the only person that has control over it. So whether you have like $1,000 or $2 million in crypto, I mean, that that's the smartest thing to do. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So what's your exit strategy after like the next bull market? Then what do you do? I mean, and then kind of speak in that too, because I know you've given your experience and your ideas to where do you think that the market's going? I mean, there's been people quoting, you know, Bitcoin's going to go to 100,000, 200,000 per coin. I mean, what's, what's your exit strategy and, yeah, give us a little future prediction. Yeah, so it, these are the most important periods, like the entry and the exit. I mean, that, that's where you basically make your gain percentage uh, at those points. So it's really the same thing as the entrance. It, it's not one point. Don't ever try and just pick one point. Like as soon as it hits, Bitcoin hits 50,000, I'm going to sell everything. And <laughs> it's like, well... Or as soon as Bitcoin goes down to like 3,400, I'm going to put everything I own in at that point. Like there's what, why? Like it, it's such a stupid decision. Just like you ladder in over, you know, a period of several months, you, you ladder out at the end of the bull market. And I can't give a date right now. We, we should definitely do a, a webinar or something when maybe like a year and a half from now, when people have like... <laughs> made massive gains already and it's like okay what do we do now but yeah at at the top of the bull market it's time to start laddering out into cash or gold or you know other assets where that'll be stable for a long period of time and you just do it in sections you do like five percent at a time because you don't know if it it may double again like i don't know how high it's going to go on this next bull run it could get pretty crazy if there's just like huge integration with major brands happening all over the world, uh, which yeah. we're starting to see, it could go nuts again because it did about a year and a half ago. So, Interesting. What are the questions they should be asking you they're not? Well, they start their entrance into crypto and learning. What other considerations, what questions? They're not asking them. They should be. No, that's a good question. I, I'm just trying to think all the pitfalls and the mistakes people make. Like, I, I can tell you the mistakes, like the majority of crypto traders lose money. I mean, that's just a fact. It, it's, it sucks to hear that, but I know why it happens. And I'll give an example, like Bitcoin's at about 4,000 right now. So it's going to have a spike pretty soon here and it might go to 7,000, let's say. And people that are not doing any research, they're just like basically looking at major media and just checking out the price. They'll see it go to 7,000. They're like, oh, here we go. Here's the next run. And they'll put all their money in at that point, And then it'll dip back to like 4,500. And then they'll sell it all because they're afraid it's going to go to zero or something. And then it spikes back up. So basically like they've lost a lot of money just with bad decisions and bad entry points because they're not following this closely enough. There was a lot of people that bought at the absolute top of the market 14 months ago. (laughs) They put all their money in at like almost $20,000 per Bitcoin. And they just held, you know, thinking it's going to a hundred thousand and they didn't really do any type of market analysis. They didn't do any research. They were just basically going off the buzz in the media and you can't do that. Like, like you're going to lose money if you kind of take an approach like that. So I hope that makes sense to people. I mean, you <laughs> you really have to do some research on this. I I mean, we're this is just a little half hour show. I hope it'll help some people here. But there's no smoke and mirrors in what I'm telling right. people right now. Just go Google this stuff that I'm talking about. Google the Golden Cross in the crypto markets and. Don't just look at the 50 and the 200 day moving average. Look at the 20, the 50, the 100, the 150. They're all like starting to cross at different periods. And then just look at the history of the past 10 years of Bitcoin and the different periods that are very similar to where we are right now. And look at when 
those moving averages crossed in those markets, just look back and it, the story starts to become pretty clear. So what are the coins? I know we're going to have to wrap up in a minute, but I just want a few more questions. What are the coins you would absolutely say run from? <laughs> like, <laughs> run. Or are there oh, any? Well, gosh. <sighs> I'm going to, I'm just like looking at the coin market cap right now, run from, <laughs> man, I don't want to get like bashed from, uh, from like the teams that are running these coins. All right. So I'll just say this one thing. I've said this a bunch of times publicly. I hope I don't get attacked or anything on social for this. I'm just not that high on Ethereum. It's because of the metrics that I'm seeing in terms of uh, where the development is happening. And I just know projects have been leaving Ethereum to build on EOS just because of the, the scalability aspect and the speed. And I hear a lot of opinions like, oh, yeah, we're going to build on Ethereum. I'm like, why? Because of the smart contracts. I'm like, that's it? Like, that's not the only place that has smart contracts. It seems like a lot of people make a decision to build on Ethereum just for what I just said. Like they don't even understand the the technology, like the speed and the scalability. And I just think like EOS is just light years ahead. And I'm really big on EOS right now because I've been following uh, Dan Larimer, who's, you know, he built uh, EOS, BitShares and Steam. And EOS is... I think people forget that they raised $4 billion. Block One is the company behind EOS. They they have $4 billion in their coffers. And Dan Larimer, he's been hinting that he's like, we haven't even started our marketing push. He's like, you guys have no idea what's coming with EOS. So most development in terms of applications are happening on EOS right now. And they haven't even really like put the big word out. So uh, it's hard to argue against that, really, in my opinion. Yeah, it is. So any last uh, words of advice, wisdom to the folks listening as we wrap up our podcast for today? (laughs) I just keep doing your research. Seriously, guys, these golden cross moments are pretty rare. You know, it's like once every few years type of opportunity where you can get a really, really big return on your investment. So. Don't take it lightly. Don't wait till the fall until like all of your friends are jumping in. Like it, it, there's so much you will have missed by that point. So the, these next few months, I mean, the, this is prime time. This is a, a big opportunity in terms Absolutely. of this market. So. And again, those of you listening, David, thank you. I always appreciate your insights, uh, just your genius. And uh, we'll you know, be staying in touch. And those of you out listening, Again, if you would like the replay of our Cannabis and Crypto Expo show we just did in Las Vegas, uh, go to asklaurel.com, put in your name, phone number, and email, and just make the request there. And uh, my team who manages that site will get it right out to you. So you can stay in this conversation and stay tuned. Um, David's going to be working on some very cool projects with me as uh, we head into the summer. So stay tuned for more. And you've been listening to Laurel's Real Money Talk. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the Real Money Talks podcast. Your host has been Laurel Langmire, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View. Want to learn more about off Wall Street investing, tax strategies, and multi-million dollar business strategies? Visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast for past episodes, show notes, and resources. For some special wealth building gifts only for Laurel's podcast listeners, visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast gifts. Do you have a burning question for Laurel? Visit asklaurel.com to submit your question, and it may just be covered on a podcast episode. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to get new episodes every week.